Hi, I'm Dr. Chris Stevens, and this is the Psychology to Live By podcast. In part one of Quietening the Mind, we examined the reasons that a quiet mind is so beneficial, and we looked at two practices to induce it extended out breathing and a simple mindfulness meditation. In this part, we'll explore three other applications. Everyday mindfulness, interpersonal mindfulness, and using mindfulness to increase our emotional intelligence and our emotional balance. Well, it's absolutely normal in mindfulness practices for our attention to wander. But of course, it also does this in life in general, while we're undertaking everyday tasks somewhat mindlessly. Think of showering or brushing your teeth or eating meals, dressing yourself, walking and so on. How much do you pay attention to the actual activity? One way of building your mindfulness capability is to turn these everyday activities into mindfulness practices. So just choose one, and it might be showering, for example. Practice noticing every feature of that shower, every sensation, every sound, every sight. And do this daily for three weeks and notice the calmness and serenity that result from this very simple practice. Then switch to another task and do the same. These activities won't take any longer. And perhaps you'll also notice you do the task much better. Another very frequent everyday activity in which our attention drifts is when we're listening while other people are speaking. We frequently are allegedly listening as we get lost in our own thoughts or in our own desire to speak. This is an opportunity to practice what I call interpersonal mindfulness. Now here the object of attention is not the breathing but it's another human being. You try to be 100% present and listen with your whole being. Become genuinely interested and curious in understanding the other person. Push away your thoughts, your brilliant ideas and your desire to respond in favour of this very curious listening. Now, of course, you can smile, nod, respond, etc. But limit your talking in favour of listening deeply. Notice what improvements result interpersonally, your, your insights into people, your own sense of calmness, your affection for others, improvements in relationships, people relaxing and being more open around you, and so on. And finally, we can use these mindfulness techniques in service of our own emotional balance. Now, an interesting feature of the way we're designed uh, is that we're designed to perceive and respond to the world in this way, that we receive sensory information first to the emotional centres of our brain and secondarily to the broader cortex, especially the prefrontal cortex. The implication of this is that we only get to think about that which has already been filtered emotionally. And if this initial quick and dirty appraisal is strongly negatively emotional, we may not get very much conscious reasoning but spring into defensive or aggressive action, fight flight. This is sometimes called the amygdala hijack, named after the central player in this emotional limbic system, the amygdala. This is an evolutionary device that has ensured our survival. But it turns out we have a 200 millisecond window to veto this initial appraisal and stop it cascading and leading to extended experiences of negative emotions and actions which then stem from them. This fifth of a second opportunity may not constitute free will, but it does enable a kind of free won't. So how does this work practically? If we're mindfully quick, 200 milliseconds after the emotional appraisal, which is actually longer than you think, if we're quick, we can intervene before it takes hold of us physiologically and psychologically. We can form a habit of noticing our negative feelings as an immediate object of mindful interest. We then take a calming breath. 
we relax. We listen to the thoughts that are upsetting us and now we can more objectively reappraise them. This ability to veto in the 200 millisecond window can increase our emotional intelligence and balance and our wisdom in action. It constitutes relative human freedom. And so I encourage you to develop this capacity. And in summary, remember, a quiet mind is a strong mind and it leads directly to a happier and healthier mind as long as you practice it. You've been listening to the Psychology to Live By podcast. If you'd like to know more, my website is www.drchris.life. And if you like the podcast, share it with people you like so they can like it too.